What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1976 Trabant 601. Up front is a 0.6 liter two-cylinder two-stroke engine and down below is a four-speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Trabant because it's a Trabi. I've never driven one here on the channel. I'm so excited to do so. This is an East German communist car, has so much history, it's so iconic, and I finally get to be behind the wheel. I'm excited to share all of that with you. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, whether you're here in Minnesota or abroad, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that two-cylinder air-cooled engine under the hood. Well, it makes about 26 horsepower, but 40 pound-feet of torque, which is not terrible. But it was the only engine offered here in the Trabant 601, which was made from 1964 until 1991. The engine sounds like it's revving higher than it is because it is a two-stroke, and of course, you do have to pre-mix two-stroke oil in with your gas. Speaking of the gas, the gas tank is under the hood and you don't get a fuel gauge, you just get this little measuring stick. I'm not kidding, that's how you measure the fuel. Something interesting about the Trabant's air filter I wanted to add is that there's a, actually a summer and a winter position. So a lot of people don't know this about the Trabant, that's the reason I wanted to say it is in case you're buying a Trabant and it's running weird, you set the intake forward in the winter because then it sucks up the hot gases or the hot air coming off of the exhaust and carburetor and things like that. You actually turn it the other way in the summer so then it gets cooler air. You turn it towards the hot air for the winter so it actually warms up faster and runs better. So not a lot of people know this and that's a fun little thing for the Trabant. But like I said, paired to it is a four speed manual transmission and this is the really weird part of the Trabant. In order to shift it the shifter goes down and right for first down and up for second and then for third you pull it towards you and down that's third towards you and up is fourth now you can only coast in fourth gear because there's actually a little wheel mechanism that allows it the engine to coast and when you get off the gas it actually goes back to idle if you cut back to the in car i'm in fourth gear right now and it's just idling in fourth but then i get back on it and it kicks in. It almost has like a bicycle style clutch system. I'm not an engineer, so I can't explain it well, but that's kind of the basics. The gas pedal is extremely light. The clutch is even lighter, but it's not hard to drive. It's just different than what us Yankees are used to. Another interesting thing about the manual transmission is that they actually did offer a semi-automatic transmission for people with disabilities. So you still had to shift it like you shift this car, but there was a hand actuated clutch at the end of the shifter. Now there's a label for that on the back window. This car actually would have had that automatic transmission from the factory. However, it was swapped out before it came to the States. So unfortunately I can't show it to you, but it was a really rare option. So this car originally did have that. Last but not least, it is front wheel drive. It's one of the first mass produced front wheel drive cars ever. It beat out the Mini Cooper by a couple of months. And the suspension is just two horizontal leaf springs. That's it. How does it feel to drive? Um, terrifying is a word but not awful. We're doing 50 miles an hour in a Trabant. <laughs> uh, this is the most glorious and yet terrifying experiences I've ever had. But it just, it plucks along. Everything is so simple, it's so neat, it's so wrapped up in one nice package that I honestly couldn't hate this with any bone in my body. And there are a couple bones in my body that are very happy right now. <laughs> All right, that's enough fun today. Let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a speedometer that has been uh, modified to reflect American speeds. And off to the right, I get this little gauge. Now, this gauge was basically like a fuel economy gauge slash tachometers. There was this little wheel up near the engine that would spin and reflect light through the fuel that was going into the engine and it would measure how much and basically do a fuel economy gauge. 
it doesn't work. The tubing setup that was associated with this wouldn't play nice with the ethanol feel here in the US, so it has been removed. On the steering wheel, don't get anything. And off to the left, we have our headlight switch, our windshield wipers, and this little squirt button that will squirt some windshield wiper fluid onto the window. There's no pump, there's no electric mechanism. It's just like a pinball shot, kind of interesting. On the door, we have the latch to get in and out, but no interior lock on the driver's door. And then we only get an interior lock on the passenger door. Very, very weird. Now this mirror is old, I don't wanna show it, but instead of having a dimmer on the mirror, you actually just spun the mirror around. So you can see from the outside, there's just a dimmer mirror on the outside. You would just spin it either way, kind of an ingenious way of doing it. Moving into the center, we have an ashtray, and I guess what would look like a radio at the time, but there was no radio here in the Trabant. Down below, we have our climate controls. Off to the left is venting, and the center is where to send it, so either up top or down below, that's it. And to the right, we do have heat, which just pulls air over the exhaust manifold and into the cabin. There's no heater core or anything like that because it's an air-cooled engine. Then we do get a little switch. This is actually the fuel switch. R is for reserve, A is for on, and Z is for zilch, which is off. We do get this nice shelf, although the big friggin' bottle does fit nicely on the shelf, it's not a dedicated cup holder. So unfortunately, the Trabant 601 from 1976 fails the big friggin' model test. Now the seats are actually decently comfortable. They do have a nice little bounce to them and I enjoy it quite a bit. However, something interesting is that the two front seats are two driver's seats. That's how they came from the factory. So in order to move the driver's seat forward and back, you have to use your left hand, but that's the same for the passenger seat. All the mechanisms are on the left side in the middle, which is kind of crammed, but it was to save money. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, I might be one of the only people on YouTube to ever do a back seat review of a Trabant 601. But here it is, you'll see it live. Ugh. Honestly, it's not terrible. I've been in worse back seats of non-communist cars that are worse than this. I really thought this was gonna be the Gulag, but it is not. Now, we do have an ashtray over here, but no ashtray over here. So at least you get one, you can light up in the back of your Trabant. You also get this awesome plush Trabant. Now, obviously this wasn't factory, but look at how cool this is. He's so cute. I love that. We get a shelf back here. My knees, if the seat were moved all the way back, would probably be squished or turned into some type of dust or powdery material. It's not bad. It's not a bad back seat. And just putting myself in the mindset of being a kid growing up in East Germany, going to get bread or food or work or going to school and being back here. And this is how I saw my closed off section of the world. Or even the idea of sitting back here as the Berlin Wall fell and so many Trabants flooded out of East Germany and seeing the outside world for very probably the first time. Seeing West Germany, seeing Volkswagens and Porsches and BMWs roaming about. I mean, the idea of seeing that out of these windows. That to me is just, it's the coolest history lesson a guy like me could ever get. So besides the point, I know I'm blabbering. Let's hop into the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so around the back of the Trabant, push the button in here and lift. And as you'll notice, it doesn't really want to stay up. So there are these like big jewel looking things and you push them back like that and then it will stay up. And then I'll show you how to put it down in a second. Here's the trunk space in the Trabant. There is a dent in the floor, so the spare tire can stand up like that, which I think is really cool. Gotta keep your tools on hand when driving a Trabant. Other than that, nothing too crazy, but as you can see for an almost 50 year old car, no rust because of that composite body. You can really see that underneath. We'll talk about it in a second. So very, very cool. But in order to get this down, you kind of just lift it up. There you go. And let it fall like that. That's the trunk. 
of a Trabant 601. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And of course this is finished in an awesome baby blue that I absolutely adore. I think it looks awesome. And also this car was one of the first composite bodied vehicles. It's a blend of like wool and a sort of resin that was pulled from coal. And so the bodies don't rust. They shatter, but they don't rust. So, you know, there's that. I also think it looks adorable. It looks straight out of the 1950s, which it basically is. So no news there, but it's a little Trabant. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think, ladies and gentlemen, driving a Trabant? Well, the driving experience actually isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was really nervous coming into this review because I knew the shifter was wonky. I know that you can't coast it in any gear but fourth or else you might damage the engine. So I was a little nervous, but honestly, I got over it pretty quickly. It's not hard to drive. This car is so joyful and so fun from a country and time where joy and fun were not in abundance. So a lot of people see these cars and they're like, oh, those are crappy little cars from a terrible country. It's really not the case. These cars were happy and this car was designed in secrecy from the government and when the secrets came out, the government loved it so much that they said, yeah, sure, let's build those. I think my favorite part of the Trabant, however, is the fact of how normal it is. And yes, in East Germany, you might had to have wait several years and be on a list in order to get your own vehicle. But I imagine the working class man or woman that was able to drive this, that was able to receive this, and have that momentary freedom in a country where freedoms weren't always guaranteed, if at all. I like to imagine the factory worker on his way home from a 12 hour shift, but he just got his Trabant that week. And so instead of the long eight mile walk home, he got to drive. And you know what? Maybe he'll take another lap around the block, cause he can. This car isn't about a communist government, it's about the hope of the people. It's that people will always find a way. And this Trabant is many, many miles from home and yet it has found a way. It has been adapted to our ethanol rich fuel. It's been adapted to our American speed limits. It has found a way to survive. It has found a way to keep going. And yes, I love communist cars because they play by a different set of rules. But sometimes the strictest parents make the most fun kids to hang out with. And that's how I feel here today. This is not a symbol of the Iron Curtain. It's a symbol of even though there was an Iron Curtain, there was still some fun and joy to be had. And today, I'm having so much fun and so much joy. I love it so very much. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carl for letting me take out his Trabant. This has been an absolute bucket list item. Carl has been absolutely wonderful. Very, very knowledgeable about the car. And I just appreciate him so dang much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.